Hi, I'm Phil Constantino, and on this Travels with Phil, we're going to the Battle of Yorktown or the Yorktown Battlefield in Virginia. This was the last major battle in the American Revolutionary War. A couple of maps out here give you an idea of where it was. French and British on one side, or, or I should say French and Americans on one side, and Germans and uh, British on the other. Lots of maps out here. They have lots of signs all over this place. And uh, here's some of the old drawings. This is the uh, surrender uh, picture and uh, all of the various sites out here redoubts nine and ten were some of the big spots out here redoubt 10 uh, that's a technical name for the, what kind of uh, fort they built here so this is some of the old drawings uh, that were made of the attack here that happened between the british and the french let me take you out there and we'll see the video that i did at the scene travels with phil continues at yorktown you're looking at redoubt number 10. this is one of the two earthwork forks forts <laughs> you can see here now this uh, in the distance there uh, that is the uh, visitor center center and on the right hand side through those trees there's redoubt number nine now when the uh, British first set up here they set up an outer ring of defenses when the Americans and French started arriving and when they realized they weren't going to have much support from the British Navy the British pulled back into the uh, from the city and set up a second ring or a, a tighter ring well the Americans took over the British initial positions, started pounding the uh, city and the uh, areas where the British were at, and then they decided to move forward to get closer. Well, their second line for a siege, these two spots here, number nine and 10, were the only things uh, blocking their second ring. And so they actually came in with uh, 400 French soldiers at this site, 400 American soldiers at the site off here to the right, closer to the York River, right next to the York River, and attacked. This was hand-to-hand -hand combat. When the Americans came in, they were uh, they didn't have any uh, bullets in their rifles. They had bayonets because they didn't want an accidental discharge to warn the British of their arrival. So they were literally doing hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, in the Americans' case, there were 400 soldiers against, I believe, 70 British. Uh, I'm not sure about the numbers with the French, but eventually the, French, the British were in that direction, about 400 yards away, and the Americans set up their guns here. And that's what pretty well pounded the uh, British into submission and led to the eventual uh, surrender here at Yorktown by Cornwallis to General George Washington. And uh, redoubts are uh, areas where, uh, you know, it's not a full-fledged fort. It doesn't have, you know, buildings and things like that. It's where you come in and build earthworks like you see here, you see here post, uh, maybe raised elevations perhaps. And then redoubt number nine. These were the two big uh, fields. Again, uh, the, the French were at, uh, attacked one side. The British uh, or the Americans attacked another. And in both cases, it was the British out there. It might have been some Germans. Again, the British and the Germans were fighting together and the French and the Americans were fighting together. Uh, Lafayette was out there and a, a different spot, the first siege line. Again, the uh, American forces and French forces put up a siege line around Yorktown where the British were at. Because the French were offshore with their uh, ships, the British could not evacuate that way. And slowly but surely, the American and uh, French forces zoomed in and circled and then eventually captured the British. And speaking of capture, this is Surrender Field where the British and Germans officially gave up. Here's the video I did there. Travels with Phil continues from Yorktown. This is what's commonly called Surrender Field, where on October 19th, the defeated British and German allies were ordered to ground your firearms. And this is where they marched in and put their weapons down. Uh, the British march down the road along with the Germans, usually called Hessians. You'll see that in a lot of the history books. You can see a bit of a road there where the vehicles are parked. They march down that road between a row of Americans on the right, French on the left. In fact, it was almost a mile long of American and French soldiers out there. There was about 13,000 of them, as I recall. The, the British and Germans came out here, ordered they formally placed down their weapons. Many of them were heartbroken, crying, angry in some cases, some cases maybe a little bit inebriated. But this ended the fighting at Yorktown. Now, contrary to a lot of uh, belief, this did not end the uh, American Revolutionary War. This was the last major battle, but it was actually two more years before a peace treaty was signed in Paris. But again, here at Yorktown, this was the last major battle of the American Revolution.
And this took place in uh, September, October of 1781. Here's some of the cannon they recovered. That was with Phil Continues at Surrender Field. These are what you call trophies of war. These are some of the artillery pieces that were recovered or surrendered by the British. They all have the dates when they were manufactured as part of the uh, normal insignia or part of the uh, normal uh, way of uh, displaying what's on the uh, cannon itself, howitzer, mortars. If you look at the bottom on this particular one, it says 1740. The very bottom. That's when it was manufactured. And then as you see up here at the top, surrendered by the capitulation of Yorktown, October 19th, 1781. So just some of the cannon that were recovered or not recovered, but just surrendered when the British and the Germans gave up here at Yorktown. And there's all kinds of technical things about uh, cannon, howitzers, uh, things uh, of George Washington's note there about it being over. The Moore House is uh, still, there's uh, supposedly parts of it here that are still there from uh, different uh, historical events here at Yorktown. The Civil War was also fought here, lots of different events, so it wasn't just the American Revolutionary War. Visitor Center is both the building and there's also some areas around it where there was some battles going on. Lots and lots and lots of uh, stuff on the inside, so this is a, a very well done uh, battlefield and a monument, a museum set up. And uh, you can see some of the uh, cannon that were set up outside of what is now the visitor center area. So uh, lots of uh, artillery or whatever it is you want to call those pieces of equipment on both sides of the uh, fighting that was going on. Again, uh, Lafayette was there. And then inside they have all kinds of stuff, uh, the Lafayette cannon. And in fact, this thing uh, got bumped into a big uh, dent there in the side of it when it got hit by another cannonball. Uh, so uh, most of these things that you see here are all original uh, uh, things. Uh, there you go from Redoubt number 10. So these are all uh, artifacts from the actual battle itself. And uh, uh, the uh, his campaign table from Lord Cornwallis. So that's what he used to do all of his notes on. Uh, this is a tent from 1776, the actual tent. I have it set off with plastic so nobody will go touching it. But uh, so a lot of these things are still out there and lots of information out here. So uh, flags, uh, things like that. So it's a kind of stuff where you can learn a whole lot about this. And for some folks, it's a heck of a lot more than you may have wanted to know. Uh, definitely a lot more than most folks will know. And then once you get outside of the actual visitor center museum part of itself, you can see some of the earthworks that are outside. And in this case, some of the very nice uh, flowers, 1742 on that particular uh, cannon right there, then that's the touch spot where you put the fire to it. Maiden Holland. Now that's more of a, a mortar uh, kind of operation right there, kind of a piece of equipment. Some of the uh, wicker works that they had set up. Now the second Allied Siege Lines, this is after they moved in forward a little bit more after the original setup as they were getting closer and closer. And then the cemetery. Uh, it's a combination cemetery, another thing. In fact, uh, let me just go over to the uh, video here and I'll tell you all about it. Travels with Phil continues. This is Yorktown in Virginia. Yes, the scene of the final major battle of the American Revolutionary War over uh, near where my uh, vehicle is, or my dad's vehicle is, is where the surrender took place between uh, the uh, British and the United States forces. Cornwallis uh, did not show up that morning. He said he was ill, so he sent his sword along with a uh, junior officer or second in command uh, they attempted to uh, give it to uh, George Washington he refused to accept it and he uh, had them go over to his second in command and hand the uh, sword over to him these are part of the uh, battlegrounds you see out there and then right next to it this is the Yorktown Cemetery now this cemetery has soldiers buried here from Civil War Right there you see, uh, died 1897. They have uh, quite a few Civil Wars veterans out here. Quite a few unnamed people. 1863, 1864. We have in other spots out here from uh, World War One. 
World War II, and they actually have a, a marker up front that says there might be some from uh, Iraqi, uh, the Iraq War. But there you go. Several of these out here, unknown soldiers, were just the bodies where were interred. So, the surrender site and the Yorktown Cemetery. Not too far from the visitor center at the Yorktown battlefield. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.